A series that dates back to an 1898 meeting here in Boulder. Nebraska leads it, 49 wins, 20 losses, two ties. But Colorado has won the last two meetings by a total of eight points. Biggest story in college football, Deion Sanders and the Colorado Buffaloes. Can they make it 2-0 against their arch rivals on a perfect Saturday morning? here in the great state of Colorado. Buffaloes, Cornhuskers, and here we go. Johnson, the deep man, he'll start inside his own five and get across the 25 up to the 20 seven yard line before being brought down that'll bring on Jeff Sims last week against Minnesota in their loss he did some good things and he did some not so good things let's start with the good things and that was what he did with his legs and he's a dynamic runner they will ask him to carry the ball 15 to 20 times today the one thing he has to avoid is what has been really his Achilles heel his entire career which is the costly turnovers he had three last week he's got to hold on to the ball here on the road first down and 10 of the 27 yard Yard line. Gabe Irvin, the single setback behind Sims, and they'll give it to him. He runs left, gets to the 33 yard gain on the play. Let's take a look at this Nebraska offense. This offensive line is experienced, and they felt like this offensive line played very well against Minnesota. They think that they can run it on Colorado, which is Colorado's weakness. I believe that's going to be with Gabe Irvin. He only got seven carries a week ago against Minnesota. Gus, I think that needs to triple. He needs to be in the 20-carry range. Sims about 15-carry range, and I wouldn't be surprised if Nebraska runs it 50-plus times today. Second down and seven at the 30-yard line. And they'll run it again. This time, Suman Craig comes up with the tackle on Urban defensively for the Buffs. Well, I said that they struggled stopping the run, and that's certainly been a point of emphasis this week in practice. They do have a little bit of a change at linebacker. Marvin Ham played most of the game. He's going to have some other guys rotating through there, but really it's going to be about those two corners, Travis Hunter and Amorion Cooper. They've got to lock down the wide receivers of Nebraska and let everybody else focus on the run. Third down and six at the 31. Ramir Johnson checks in at running back. Sims out of the shotgun. He'll throw it on third down. Goes through his progressions. Underneath, caught, and a first down. He found his tight end, Nate Bowricker. And that's a first down for Nebraska, a gain of 17. And a beautiful job of finding the space right here. Watch, he's going to find that zone over the top. Great time afforded Jeff Sims by the offensive line. And Borkercher is perfectly in phase, and it's a first down. That is a great omen for Nebraska. Throwing for a first down early on third down. Jeff Sims has got to be happy with the way this game is starting. First down and 10 at the 48. Johnson remains in the game opening series for Nebraska here's Johnson trying to run left and he's shot down from behind no gain on the play Juwan Mitchell Tennessee transfer comes up with the tackle yeah Juwan Mitchell came to camp late really got to Colorado about August 6th and now he's starting didn't play much last week but they wanted to put him into the lineup because they feel like he's going to help them in run defense and makes a good stop there on first down. Second and 10 at the 48-yard line. Sims looking. Underneath, caught again, and a first down plus some. Beautiful catch by Billy Kemp and an even better run. He picks up 21 down inside the Colorado 30-yard line. Boy, that is a good omen for Nebraska. Billy Kemp is a guy they need to get the ball to a little bit more. It's just going to be an easy little hook route right in front of the safety. That's Shiloh Sanders who takes a really poor angle. That's a missed tackle, and Kemp is able to scamper forward for a first down, Gus. 21-yard reception, first down at the 31-yard line for Nebraska on their opening series. They'll run it straight ahead. Not a lot of room as Gabe Irvin shot down Jordan Dominic. 
That's a loss of one. Well, it's interesting. This this front seven so far has done a nice job against the run. That's where we thought they would struggle. And then it's the passing defense that's given up a couple of big plays here so far to Nebraska. But this is where Charles Kelly, the defensive coordinator, wants to be. Second and long, where he feels like he can try to be aggressive and try to get after Jeff Sims when he feels like Nebraska's in an obvious passing situation. Second down and a long 11. Coming up, timeout on the field. Nebraska there called that timeout. Confusion in the huddle, Gus, and they'll take their first. Time for today's game flow, sponsored by Progressive. Nebraska on their opening series. This is the seventh play of the drive that started at the 27 yard line and they'll run it Irvin trying to break it back not a lot of room well done this time It's Harris with the tackle well, That'll bring up third down and long. Yeah, and this is where they wanted to be in an obvious passing situation Sims was able to find the tight end Borkercher on the first third down on this series some poor tackling out of the secondary for Colorado so far We'll see if the offensive line can give Sims some time and if he can find an open receiver Kemp is probably Gus their best He's number one in the slot third down and ten at the 31 Here's Sims bobbles a snap loose ball who's got it? And Colorado says they have it, and they do. Arden Walker with the fumble recovery. Another turnover for Jeff Sims. And this one hit him in the hands. I don't think this is a bad snap. It's right there, and Sims tries to take his eyes up to the wide receivers too early, and Arden Walker fights for the ball, and that's exactly what Colorado needed. Positive drive offensively for Sims in Nebraska, but ends again in a turnover. That was the story last week. Now 35 turnovers so far in his career. That's the most among active Big Ten players and something they've got to fix. So that brings on Shador Sanders. What a game last week. Over 500-yard passing, four touchdowns, no picks. And watch the speed, Gus, with which they run this offense. Hyper tempo on first down near side that ball caught at the 40 yard line this time it's Xavier Weaver Weaver with a wonderful game last week against TCU they'll be up at the line of scrimmage and they'll be ready to go Shador Sanders as well as he played with his arm I thought he's, he was best with his mind second down and six and they'll run it straight ahead Dylan Edwards who was spectacular last week no gain on that play Linhart with the tackle four touchdowns for Edwards one week ago and now Sanders in an obvious passing situation here watch his feet today his feet will tell you whether he recognizes the coverage or not when his feet are calm in the pocket that means he knows exactly what he's looking at third down and six at the 39 trips at the top of your screen empty backfield for Shadour Sanders they got a mismatch down here low that's Edwards on a linebacker and that's what they want Here's Sanders looking across the middle, caught, and they'll go down at midfield. This time it's Jimmy Horn Jr. The South Florida transfer gains 10. Nice job of him getting inside of that safety. A little pause route, Sanders right on the money. How many times did we say that last week? Accuracy, calm feet. Sanders goes one, two, ball out, first down. First down at the 48-yard line. Shador Sanders out of the gun, steps up in the pocket, decides to run it, tucks it and slides down at the 50. Fans wanted a late hit, Luke Reimer defensively, and there's a flag on the play. They're going to get Savion Washington, though. This is going to be on Colorado. Savion Washington, the right tackle, Gus 78. He took exception with Luke Reimer contacting Shador after he slid and came in late with a big chest bump. Reimer was back in the official's lap, and that's when the flag came out. After the play was over, unsportsmanlike conduct, number 78, 15 yards the run, downtown, second half. That's 78's first foul. 
Reimer was committed before Sanders started that slide. That's why the flag is not thrown on Reimer. And then there's the bump at the end. And Reimer gives a little NBA action, a little MLS action. Had a touch of a flop there, Gus, but Savion Washington trying to protect his quarterback still got to be smart. Offensive line played well. They were a question mark coming into the game last week. And they protected very well. Even though they took a few sacks, I think for the most part, Coach Prime was happy with the way that they protected Shador Sanders. They got some big tackles. I'll tell you, the tackles, wow. Savion Washington is 6'8", 320. Lichten Hand is 6'10", 315 on the left side. And they get Landon Beebe back inside at guard, but really it's about the talent. Edwards, Horn, Hunter, Weaver. How often can you get, get, get them the ball? Second down and 24, Sanders avoiding the rush. Throws over the middle, and it's caught. Xavier Weaver once again for Colorado. And Weaver gains 14 last week, six catches, 118 yards. The mismatch for Colorado is going to be their slot players, whoever is in the slot, on the linebackers and the safeties of Nebraska. I think that's where Colorado will make their most pro productivity today on offense. Third down and 10 at the 48. Shadur Sanders to the sideline. What a throw. Woo! Travis Hunter with the catch. But Sanders put that one on a frozen rope. And he was rolling to his left, Gus. Flips his hips around and his shoulders. And that ball's perfectly thrown. Hunter lays out. Beautiful job by the two superstars. First down for Colorado. They'll run it with Edwards between the tackles. That's a hard throw. I would imagine, Joel. A hundred percent. And in particular, like I said, because he was moving left. And you've got to get that left shoulder, the front shoulder, all the way back to the throw spot, which is hard to do. He did it beautifully. And then have enough power in the arm to get it all the way outside. Here's Sanders throwing again over the middle. Incomplete. Had a receiver. It was Weaver. Couldn't haul it in. And that'll bring up third down and five. Well, this defense, I felt like they played so well a week ago against Minnesota. They're going to be without their best defensive lineman in the first half, Ty Robinson, because of a targeting penalty last week. They are going to get Nick Henrich back, one of their leaders. Played a lot of football for Nebraska at the linebacker spot, but he won't start. Their best player, Gus, is likely their corner, Quentin Newsom, number six. I think he's going to follow Travis Hunter around most of the day. Third down and five of the 36 opening series for Colorado. Shadur Sanders, all day to throw it. Let's it fly off his back foot and throws this one out of bounds. Travis Hunter, who had 11 grabs last week. Playing both offense and defense, the intended receiver. You know, I think that they might go for this. This is the field position right here that Coach Prime's going to be aggressive, and they'll keep the offense on the field. Fourth down and five from the 36. Three receivers at the bottom of your screen. Nebraska jumps offside. And if this is against Nebraska, That'll be a first down on fourth down. Boy, if I was Colorado, I'd be upset that they blew this dead unless this is a false start. Offside. The reason I would be upset is that this isn't a free path to the quarterback, and it's a free shot that Sanders could have taken down the field, and yet they blew it dead right there. But they will get Gus the opportunity to move the chains. First down and 10 at the 31. Drive started at the 35 for Colorado. Deion Sanders watching from the sideline. His son, Shadur, at quarterback. Shadur Sanders play action in trouble avoids a rush and just slings it out of bounds and incomplete under major pressure Henrich Gus I, I think that the flag might come out here because I don't think he was outside of the pocket for an intentional grounding if he was and they deem he was outside of the pocket then he can make that throw if he wasn't there needs to be a receiver in the area which there wasn't intentional grounding Is lost down at the time of the foul. Second down. 
You see where the tackle is. He's about two yards to the left of that hash. So that's where Sanders would have had to get. And when he releases this ball, he's not outside of the pocket. That's a good call by the officials. And immediately that side judge up top, he ran in to the referee and said, I've got no receiver in the area. That's when the flag comes out. And now Colorado will be way behind the chains. That'll make a second down and a long 25. Dylan Edwards in the backfield. Here's Sanders to throw it. Steps up with a lane. Shadour Sanders still on the move and finally slides down inside the Nebraska 30-yard line using his legs. Didn't have to do that too often last week against TCU. No, he didn't, and that's because they kept finding open receivers. But here, watch this open up. They're running man underneath and then two deep. Anytime you see two safeties deep and man underneath, the quarterback can run. There's nobody responsible for the quarterback. He sees that smart run right there. And that's the thing about Sanders. It seems like he knows what to do in every situation. I thought that was the main point out of week one is how smart Sander, Sanders played. The ball went to the proper spot every single time and it's doing it again here today. Cerebral over the years, Nebraska and Colorado. Right now, no score, 534 to go first quarter. Colorado, there's Michael Irvin, the playmaker, folks. He's with us now. And Skip Bayless. Here at Fox, Sports 1 and Fox. We love having him on our team. Great friend, former teammate to Deion Sanders. And you see all the pros around this program right now. Last week I saw Warren Sapp. Yesterday I saw Cordell Stewart, Michael Westbrook, Terrell Owens. And from what I'm hearing, a lot of these former pros and Hall of Famers, one coach. And they would love to coach with Deion. Full start. Offense. 65. Still third down. Well, drives like this will make you not want to coach. <laughs> you know, when there's miscues like th this, we, we see there expecting the snap doesn't come. Jack Bailey, 65, comes out of his stance, and now it's a long yardage situation, and that probably knocks them out of field goal range, Gus, so a costly penalty right there if they're unable to pick up any yardage. Third down and 15 at the 36. Empty backfield. Here's Sanders backpedaling. Over the middle and incomplete. Well defended by Nebraska. Edwards, the intended receiver. So that brings up fourth down and 15. Maybe out of field goal range. I don't know. Let's see. It's right on the edge. And you see the shot that Sanders takes here. A breakdown in protection. He tries to get the ball over the middle. Gets taken down to the ground. And they will, Gus, end up punting this away again. That's That false start was so costly for Colorado. Knocked them back five yards and out of field goal range. Mark Vassett, three punts last week, averaging 44 yards. One punt inside the 20. He'll stand at midfield. Billy Kemp. The deep man inside his own 10. Bassett pops this one up in the air, end over end, takes a bounce, and into the end zone for a touchback. So coming up, Colorado on defense, Travis Hunter, two-way star, will be ready to play when we return. You know they used to call Dr. Pepper Joel when I was in Waco? You told me this. I can't remember at the top of my head. They used to call it a Baptist beer. That's right. That's right. <laughs> First down and 10 at the 20. And Jeff Sims have turned it over the last time he touched the football. And they'll run it over the right side. Irvin. And he gets around the corner, picks up four yards on the play. Dragged down by Dion's other son, Shiloh Sanders. And this... When this matchup plays out, Nebraska on offense, Colorado on defense, the most important down of any set of downs is going to be first down. Gus, because the, the more times Colorado can force Nebraska into an obvious passing situation, they feel like they're going to win. At the end of this play, watch Travis Hunter, who's got to defend a tight end. And if I'm Nebraska, this is exactly what I'm going to do. Anytime Hunter is involved on defense, wide receiver or tight end should hit him, block him. Try to put him in harm's way. Second down and seven. Sims in trouble. Got it away. Incomplete. And this time, Thomas Fedoni was the target. 
he just could scoop it up. And this guy was highly recruited. That's a good pass from Sims. I know Fedoni is laying out there, but Fedoni, who was highly recruited, dealt with two different knee injuries, just can't quite haul it in. Nebraska faithful have been waiting for Fedoni to enter that prime of his Nebraska career and be a threat in the passing game. Third and seven to the 23. Colorado with the chance to get off the field right here. Here's Sims looking. Sims underneath caught, but not enough for the first down. And the Cornhuskers will be forced to punt it away. Silman Craig with the tackle, a gain of three. Cameron, On third and seven. And Cameron Silman Craig, he's going to come up from this safety spot watch right here so Silman Craig he does a nice job of reading the route and then coming up and making a sure tackle in space he's starting because Miles Slusher the the normal strong safety who made the fourth down stop a week ago Gus he's out with injury and Silman Craig with a nice tackle there Jimmy Horn Jr. the deep man and he comes up to field it at the 35 still running and he'll go out of bounds at the 45 so coming up, Travis Hunter now will be back on the field on offense. Great two-way star. What an honor it is to watch this young man. And he'll be back right after this. Hey. For over a century, college football has showcased the athletic talents of many players who have played on both offense and defense. Travis Hunter is following in their footsteps. Last week, Joe, 145 plays. Yeah, normally it's a guy that's dominant on one side of the ball and then has a package on the other side. Not just playing every play the whole game, which Hunter has done so far here today. Sanders delivers, and it's caught this time. Jimmy Horn with the reception. And last week, the heat index was a consistent 105. I think training at altitude helps him to do this. And now at altitude, something that Sean Lewis, the offensive coordinator, wanted was hyper tempo, really fast pace. He hasn't really gotten to that yet with this offense. Second down and five. And the Buffalo's running it straight ahead. I forgot we're in high altitude. Yeah. No wonder I'm a little tired. Yeah, you, you feel that? Yeah, yeah. Just a little windy? What happens? I mean, am I going to hit a second wind? Yeah. No, that's, <laughs> that's, that's the point. There's Sean Lewis, wants to go fast. Those penalties on the first series, Gus, really prevented them from getting into the rhythm that they want to establish. Third down and two. Sanders dumps it down. Edwards. And Dylan Edwards bottled up and taken to the ground hard. He loses four yards on the play as... Bayer, 42. Bayer comes up with the tackle. Bayer did a great job of recognizing this, and then he was out for Edwards. Edwards, he was too far outside of his lineman for a screen pass. Sometimes those young running backs, they can get in a hurry. He was too far outside, and that's what allowed Bayer to rally up and make the tackle in space, and that's something that this Nebraska defense did really well last week against Minnesota and has to do great today is tackle well in space. Colorado will try to feature those athletes in the open field, and Bayer right there took down one of their better ones, the young running back Dylan Edwards. Tell you what, you got to give a lot of credit to this Nebraska defense. They're playing hard and strong early in this game, 3-0-1 to go in the first. They've gotten a little pressure on Shador. And then we've seen him tackle well in space. And those are two things that are a must for this defense. Billy Kemp, the deep man at the 10-yard line. Lassett, end over end kick. And fair caught at the 7. A big day of football continues next on Fox with the battle for the Cyhawk Trophy between Iowa and Iowa State. Then at 7 Eastern, number 13, Oregon visits Texas Tech, followed by Stanford taking on reigning Heisman winner Caleb Williams in sixth-ranked USC. It's all right here on Fox. Boy, USC continues to look great on offense. That should be a surprise to nobody around college football. But here, not a lot of offense, and we certainly expected a lot more than we've seen so far here, waning moments of the first quarter, Gus, but this Jeff Sims-led Nebraska team, they've had a little success throwing the ball. They've had the one turnover. Got to get it going on the ground. First down at the seven-yard line. Irvin breaks it back with running room. We'll slide forward, get about six yards on the play. Kyrie Manns with the tackle. And a 
perfect world this Nebraska team would chew up lots of clock for Matt Rule and limit the number of possessions overall in this game. They want this to be about a 16, 17, 18 possession game overall. It looks like Colorado's confused here defensively, and they're going to have to take a timeout. And now Colorado with two minutes and 19 seconds remaining in the first. They call their first timeout. All right, let's go to some Aflac trivia for you. Who is the only Colorado quarterback to finish in the top five of Heisman voting? Aflac trivia question sponsored by Aflac. Get help with expenses. Health insurance doesn't cover it with Aflac. What Colorado quarterback finished in the top five? Well, it's... Was it you? No. <laughs> no, it wasn't. It was either Darian Hagan or Cordell Stewart. I think it's Darian Hagan. And he kind of split votes with Eric Bieniemy, and they lost the Heisman to, I believe, Gino Toretta. There you go. You are correct, sir. Man, I th these are like trick questions. I wanted to say Cordell for a I second. I thought they were going to trick you with yeah, Cordell. Yeah, yeah. Saw him yesterday at practice, looking good. Second and four at the 13. Irvin, the pistol back. They give it to him. Stretches it out wide and picks up a first down. Stays in bounds as it crosses the 20. Nice piece of running. Travis Hunter with the tackle. Nice job on the edge here by the tight ends and then the wide receiver who's going to come in and kind of crack from that opposite side. And it allows Irvin to get the edge. And that spills then to Travis Hunter. Really good running teams love to put those corners in a bind and have to force them up into the run defense. And Nebraska does it there as the ball spills outside into the corner's lap. First down at the 22 for the Cornhuskers. Irvin running the same way. Tried to squeeze through the hole. It'll pick up three yards on the play. Gets to the 25. Dominic defensively for Colorado. Well, they're definitely doing what I suggested at the opening possession of the game, feeding Gabe Irvin. Last week, only seven carries, 55 yards, almost eight a pop. Already seven carries today in the first quarter. Second and seven at the 25. Ramir Johnson replaces Irvin. And some movement up front. Let's see. They got a little head start on that left side, Gus. Full start. Offense. Number 57. Five yard penalty. Still second out. That's Ethan Piper, the left guard. And he just gets that little head start right there. Although, if he was playing for the Chiefs, I think that would just, just <laughs> let him go. My goodness, how about that? Uh -huh. Second down and 12 of the 20. Three penalties. Against Colorado, two against Nebraska. Here's Sims flushed out. Flag on the play, and they'll throw this one out of bounds. The flag way back deep. It looks like there was a hold. Turner Corcoran, the left tackle, as Sims was leaving the pocket, and they'll ask Colorado whether they want to take that penalty or not. part for Nebraska is that their wide receiver group is banged up. Guy who led them in targets a week ago, Isaiah Garcia Castaneda tore his ACL. They really have Billy Kemp, Marcus Washington. Those are your two main targets right now for Nebraska. But these corners are very good, in particular in man coverage, which they're playing. Third down and 12 of the 20. Empty backfield for Sims. Remember, he's a prolific runner. Here's Sims underneath, and it's caught. Kemp trying to work his way upfield, but is wrestled down nicely done as Carter Stoutmeyer 
freshman brings him down after a gain of seven. And that could take us to the end of the first quarter. Stoutmeyer is a guy that they're very high on as a freshman. Obviously, they had a lot of acclaim getting Cormani McLean, who was the number one corner in the class, and yet it's been Carter Stoutmeyer, a guy who has come in 5'11", 205 pounds, and he has really impressed this coaching snap, uh, staff. And that tackle right there was evidence of that, Gus, in a big moment on the field, makes the play. And that takes us to the end of the first quarter. Everybody expecting fireworks in Boulder, but we're scoreless after one. Because Pack Life Game Summary, sponsored by Pack Life, creating financial security for more than 150 years. Look at what we've got so far. 0-0. Zero, zero. Here we go. Jeff Sims got it going a little bit, then the turnover, but we, what we haven't seen is the electricity from the Colorado offense, which is what we were expecting coming into this game. Brian Buschini will punt it away for Nebraska inside the 15. Jimmy Horn Jr., the deep man for the Buffaloes at the 26. He tracks it down on the near side. That ball out of bounds. And the Buffaloes will have it at the 42. Let's go downstairs to Jenny. Well, Coach, I know Jeff Sims had that early turnover, but what is key to them moving forward and getting your offensive rhythm? Yeah, you know, um, it, it's a back-and-forth game, though. They're, they're playing a lot of man. They're coming after us. Um, had to be a little bit better on first down. The penalties hurt us there. You know, we were second and four, got the first down, then we had another penalty. So I think we just had to settle down. We knew we knew coming here, the tempo they would have, that we were just have to withstand the surge. Now we're just going to keep trying to make a football. Thanks for the time. Thank you. Yeah, that was moments ago. Coach Rule speaking with our Ginny Taft. First down and 10 at the 43. Sanders steps up, and he's taken down. Great defense, Cameron Linhart. That's a loss of two. And Linhart is the one who's playing in place of Ty Robinson. Now already Shadur has been under pressure six times. He's now been sacked a couple of times on only 14 dropbacks. So the rhythm not there for Colorado's offense like we saw a week ago against TCU. Second and 12 at the 41. Sanders winds up far side on the money. Great throw, nice catch. This time it's Xavier Weaver who's turning into a go-to receiver for Shadur Sanders. And, and Sanders will go where the defense tells him to go. And now a, a crucial play here to try to stay on the field. Trips at the top of your screen, third and three at midfield. It's like Nebraska wants to blitz here. Dylan Edwards, the single setback. Sanders. On third and three, rolls out, delivers, incomplete. Great pressure by this Nebraska Cornhusker defense. Hunter, the intended receiver. But the pressure by Nebraska flag on the play. shooting themselves in the foot yeah this one was it was not even a player on the field so watch watch as hunter is going out of bounds here and he's just kind of going out of bounds and then there's going to be a shove right here not by the corner or anything all of a sudden there's oh no hunter reacts to just an arm out and then the flag came out that's that's a miss right there just an arm not really a shove and then hunter reacts and draws the flag that is unfortunate for nebraska there certainly should not have been a flag and it gives Colorado Gus a first down. First down at the Nebraska 35. Sanders floats one up the sideline. Incomplete. No flags on the play. Weaver again the target. Malcolm Herzog defensively for Nebraska. Yeah, and Malcolm Herzog is the guy that gave up that fourth down completion late to Minnesota a week ago. And Matt Rule told us that he went up to him and he said, listen, 
just keep playing. You've got to have a short memory as a corner because sometimes you're going to get beat. That just happened to be in the last play of the game on a fourth down. He thinks that this guy is scrappy and a very good player. Sanders in trouble, and Sanders sacked again. Nebraska applying major pressure, second sack for Lenhart. Well, what they're doing here is very smart. They're showing Sanders that he's got an open access, easy throw into the short side of the field, and then the linebacker drops right in front of it. So all of a sudden, it becomes a double coverage. Sanders can't throw the ball and has to just take the sack. And how about Lenhart having a day? The freshman from Staten Island, New York, already with a couple of sacks. Sanders started four for four, but three of eight since, and sacked twice. Third down and a long 16. Sanders steps up with time, looking. Sanders holding on to it, doing his best Fran Tarkington impersonation. Sanders, and he finally just goes out of bounds at the 45. Shadur Sanders loses a couple of yards on the play, but nobody open. I tell you, this coverage was just exceptional. The protection was there initially, and Sanders had nowhere to go with the ball. One of the things Colorado did great last week was scramble rules. These wide receivers know that as soon as Shador breaks the pocket, they've got to get open. But there wasn't a lot of movement there. It allowed Nebraska to defend them, and then Shador trying to pull his own Caleb Williams here. Can't get it done. Buffalo's punting it away. Vassett. And Kemp. Allows it to take a bounce, and it's down inside the 10. Nebraska defense playing extremely well here in the first half. No score. Cornhuskers ready to go back on offense right after this. Shadur Sanders, rough day so far, courtesy of that D-line for Big Red. I should be at LC. I keep shooters well. Throw it well against the Nebraska defense. The opposite has happened so far in this first quarter. Both defenses playing very well. First down and 10 to the nine yard line. Here's Gabe Irvin following his blocks with a lane. Irvin still moving. Irvin gets across the 35 to the 36 a gain of 26 yards sanders and omarion cooper combining on the tackle great block on the edge right here tackle tied in opens up a huge hole for gabe irvin already his eighth carry of the game had seven in the first quarter now eight this one was a big one and again when he gets that head of steam going he is a big back 220 pounds and gus he's elusive and this run game, they got to start establishing it. That was a good start. 26-yard run. First down at the 35. And Irvin tackled by Shane Coates. No gain on the play. Let's go downstairs, check in with Jen. Well, something to point out, Gus, with Coach Rule. Really, this is an entirely different team. When you talk about the chemistry, the atmosphere, the way this group has come together, I had a chance to catch up with linebacker Luke Reimer, who told me, I feel like a freshman again. And he's a senior. He said the first thing Coach Rule brought in to the mix, he sat down with the players, said, what do you guys need from me? What do you want to do better? He believes that this team has moved on from the past. They believe in the process from Coach Rule, and defensively, a good start. All right, second down. Here's Sims. Being chased, Sims throws on the run, and it is caught. Beautiful grab by Billy Kemp. How did he keep a foot in bounds? Gains 18. I mean, Sims dead sprint to his right, and watch Kemp get his hands under the ball and that foot down. That was sensational stuff. Kemp transfer from Virginia. He's a guy that's had a lot of catches in his career. As a completed catch at the side of so they're going to take a look at it. And the, they'll look at the process here. Gus, the first thing that has to be established is control. So you've got to say, when does he get control? Right there. And then there was a knee down. That left knee was down inbounds. And then he's got to maintain control through Looks the like process to of me. going to the ground. And he did. It, it does to me as well. There's control, knee. Now he just has to maintain possession and control, and he does in that right hand. That's a beautiful catch. Because he had 192 grabs at Virginia before transferring to Nebraska. Certainly a guy that they need to feature a little bit more, and they have so far today. Ranks fourth in 
Virginia history in receptions with 192 and 10 in career receiving yards. The side, on the sideline, the receiver had a left knee inbounds and maintained control throughout the process of the reception. Therefore, ruling on the field is confirmed. That's some good stuff right there. And that was after the first game as a coaching staff. you got to go back almost to the drawing board. I call it a hindsight page. What do we need to do better? What should we have done different? Part of what this staff told us was that Billy Kemp needed to get the ball more in space. I know that was a broken play, but just a picture of what he can provide. Marcus Satterfield, the offensive coordinator, and the talent that he has on the outside. First down and 10 at the 47. And they'll run it straight ahead, and it's Sims who picks up a first down. Marion Cooper with the tackle, but Jeff Sims, we know he can run the ball. 19 carries last week for 91 yards against Minnesota. He's a big, strong quarterback, you know, 220 pounds, and they're looking right now at that left shin, whether it was down before they actually called it down, probably was. Probably need to move this back. I don't know if replay will get involved or not. And there's the stoppage. I think that they will. Might try to make this a quick review. Our replay can just, with the headset and the communication system, Gus, just tell the referee, move the ball to this yard line, and it's first and ten. The previous play is under further review to assess whether the runner's knee was down. I don't think we need a full review, but hey, you know. Yeah. And our rules analyst, Dean Blandino, joins us. Dino, your thoughts? This would be a good opportunity, as Joel was saying, for a quick review. They have their wireless communication. It was clear the shin was down. Just tell the referee, put the ball on the 43. It's going to be second down, and we can avoid going to a full stoppage. Yeah, and that's that would be, I guess, the only hard part is first, Dean, establishing, okay, we have a runner that is down. The shin is down right there. Now, what was the down in distance? Did he achieve the line to gain? A first down would have been at about the 37, and he's down at the 43, and like you said, Dean, it'll be second down. Exactly right. We have to know where the line of game was, and they're communicating that to the referee during the review process. Runner's knee was down at the 43-yard line. Replace the ball there. Well, that run game, though, as they went through that, they're starting to churn a little bit, aren't they? The, the big run to start this drive by Gabe Irvin, and then that beautiful little, and, and it's a read for Jeff Sims, but it's a read where the read is actually trying to take the runner outside, and then Jeff Sims is the inside read, and that's that kind of quarterback, they call it like a cute power type of a read. And I tell you, that's very effective. They'll come back to that at some point during this half. Second down and six at the 43. Nebraska showing ability to move the football. They'll run it straight ahead. More running room. Irvin. And he'll go down inside the 30. Cooper with the tackle. But that's a gain of 13. Now this Nebraska offensive line starting to push. Yeah, and a beautiful little pull right there. You've got Bonner 16, kind of an extra fullback tight end. And that offensive line pushing towards the left. And then watch Bonner right here. He's going to get this seal right there. That's a beautiful block. Allows the cutback lane. And Irvin scampers downfield. As you mentioned, Joel, Styles make fights. Nebraska good at running it. Colorado not good at stopping the run. Here's another run for the Huskers. Johnson upended by Marvin Ham. But he gained six on the play. I really love what Nebraska has done. You heard Matt Rule at the quarter break tell Ginny they're running a lot of man coverage and being aggressive on first down. And so what Marcus Satterfield, the offensive coordinator for Nebraska, has done is he has implemented a lot of motion into these first down run calls. Gus, you notice that there's a wide receiver racing across the set on almost every single down. And what that's doing is that's making Colorado have to think about their man coverage 
who's got who, and because of that, they're finding some run lanes on the inside. So Marion Cooper that was apparently down. Injury timeout. 8.40 to play in the second. Back after this. And actually, folks, we'll stay right here. Eight minutes and 40 seconds to go. Second down and four here in the second quarter at the 24 for the Cornhuskers. Scoreless game. Nebraska losing to Minnesota on the road last week. Colorado winning on the road at TCU last week. Cornhuskers lucky to get back to the line of scrimmage. Ham, Dominic combining on the tackle. And they've got an extra offensive line right now. At lineman, they're trying to go big. Now they'll bring in an extra tight end. This is about as big as you can go. Only one wide receiver, maybe two out there. Extra lineman, extra tight end. Nebraska trying to get physical right here. Third down and five. And that ball deflected off a Cornhusker in motion. Lyndon Meyer, the fullback, is trying to time the motion, get him across the formation, but he called for the snap too early, and they are so fortunate that Lyndon Meyer was able to look back and dive on that ball and save possession for this field goal opportunity. So this will be a 45-yarder for Tristan Alvano. Clean snap, good hole, got it up, and oh, it hit the right upright. No good. Alvano, game of inches. 80s and 90s delivered some of the greatest games that these two teams have ever played. And you were at the big one in 2001, weren't you? Yeah, I was, I was just a fan. So actually, I was sitting in the stands and I was like, this looks like more fun than minor league baseball. <laughs> First down of the 27. And they'll run it. And it's Cavassier smoke. What's Nebraska doing defensively to confuse this Colorado team? Well, there's no in-between so far, and that's because Nebraska is either getting after the quarterback or dropping eight into coverage, but they've won the one-on-one -on -one matchups up front. Sanders has had to pump fake several times, isn't quite comfortable with the defensive looks he's seeing in the secondary, and then they're getting home with that pass rush. So what's the adjustment if you're Colorado? Well, they're trying to get to some run game right here and provide shorter yard situations. It's not working. Working, though I would get to try to get to quick game they need to get their athletes the ball in space immediately and try to break a tackle that way that's the one thing that Tony White's defense was very nervous about was tackling in space they've done well so far but Tony White has done a great job they played terrific last week against Minnesota on that defensive side and they're playing great today third down and nine at the 28 yard line for Shadur Sanders and the Buffaloes, here's Sanders, winds up, deep ball, nobody close. It's a miscommunication on the route. Hunter, closest man to the football, and Colorado will have to punt it away. I believe this is their fourth punt. We did not see four punts last week with Colorado. This offense is totally out of rhythm, and this is exactly what Colorado fans were nervous about. How would they play after that euphoric win on the road against TCU. It has not been the same here today for their offense. Vassett inside his own 15. High spiraling punt. Fair caught at the 29. 43 yard punt coming up. Cornhuskers with the football. No score from Boulder. 
but we're still looking for our first points. Rob Stone back here with you. And coming up on the State Farm halftime, the guys will join me. We'll talk about how Nebraska's been able to slow down this Colorado offense. Plus, highlights around the nation, including number 10 Notre Dame. Tough road test in Raleigh and Utah. Having some early issues, guys, with the Baylor team that fell to Texas State last week. All right, thank you very much. First down and 10 of the 29. Another fumble. Sims coughs it up again. Holy Chicago Jeff Sims fumbles the snap. Dominic has it. And Colorado's in business. These are not bad snaps. They're right where they need to be. They're trying to time up this motion, and he continues to snap the ball right when the motion is passing him. I believe that that took his eyes off the ball. It hits the ground, and how about Dominic? Picks it up with one hand, and now Colorado inside the 20. A couple of turnovers from this defense and massive mistakes from Jeff Sims so far in this first half. That's the third time Nebraska's put the ball on the ground. They've lost two fumbles. Colorado with a great opportunity here. Sanders sideline. And it's caught out of bounds. Tarvarish Dawson with the reception, a six-yard gain. Number six, Quentin Newsom with the tackle. I would just stand up and throw it to the open receivers as fast as I possibly can. Can hitch. Get the ball in space right now. Second out and four. Sanders in space, and that's incomplete. <laughs> Dylan Edwards tried to get it out of the backfield. Omar Brown there defensively for Nebraska. And watch Sanders. Every time they rush three, he's got to pat the ball. Why? Because there's eight defenders back there, and there's not a lot of space when you're inside the red zone. He's got to try to get it all the way out. Dylan Edwards can't hang on. Third and four at the 13. Sanders underneath. Horn. Looking for space, and he may have lost a yard on this one. I tell you what, this Nebraska defense is flying around. I love the game plan from Tony White, the execution from these players. They have played fantastic. They're trying to get this little screen to the outside and bring these linemen a little tunnel screen to get the linebackers. They never get off their blocks, and then Horton doesn't die for the line to gain. So Jace Feely comes in to attempt a 31-yarder. He had a 49-yarder. Last week against TCU. Got it up. And Colorado finally on the board. 4.20 to play in the second quarter. Buffaloes lead the... On top of Nebraska late here in the second quarter. That one into the end zone for a touchback. Well, Gus, we're going to have to... There's some extracurricular here. I haven't seen a flag yet, but these miscues are all related to quarterback operation. And you look at Jeff Sims just drops a snap. That was a turnover in this game in scoring territory. Then he does not operate the motion and time it with the snap properly. They don't get the third down. They miss the field goal. And then there again, trying to time the motion, drops the ball. It's a turnover. So they're going to have to decide what they want to do at quarterback. They do have a guy that got into the game as an H-back last week. Heinrich Harbour is the first in-state scholarship QB in Nebraska since 2001, number 10. Just be watching over the next couple of series how they want to play this with Jeff Sims struggling with turnovers. And one of the off-season focuses for Sims was limiting turnovers. Coach said at fall cap, he was making progress in that area. First down and 10 of the 25. Sims guns it to the sideline. Caught and out of bounds goes Billy Kemp. Kemp has certainly done his part so far today. A few catches so far in this first half, and this offense, outside of those miscues, has moved the ball on the last couple of possessions, primarily through the run game. Second down and five at the 30. Approaching the four-minute mark of the second quarter. Sims gives it up. Whoa, what a tackle. 
Jordan Dominic dominating. Loss of two. Watch how fast he gets into the backfield and disrupts this. Irvin gets the ball and he is put down by Dominic. He's the one who recovered the fumble in the last series and here, bam, wraps him up. Perfect tackle. And now Colorado with a chance to get off the field. That'll make it third down and seven. At the 28. I think that's a delay. I don't think he got it off in time. Well, the, the, the operation just isn't clean, is it, Gus? He's got to, I don't know. Matt Rule may have to find somebody else to play quarterback for him because Sims is costing his team games. Cost him last week with the turnovers. And this week as well, when it comes to a defense that's playing excellent football. Third down and 12 of the 23. Unforced errors by the Georgia Tech transfer. Sims throws on the move and intercepted. Wow! Sylvan Craig. Cannot throw this ball. Silman Craig read this the entire way. Maybe for a moment, Fedoni was open 24. As he breaks, he's open there. Not now, and you can't telegraph that ball with the defender undercutting the tight end, and Silman Craig runs right under it, and that's about as easy a pick as you're going to get. Cameron Silman Craig starts today for an injured slusher and has come up huge here with another turnover. And this defense is again, Gus, put into a poor position by their offense. First down at the 30-yard line. Can Sanders and the Buffaloes pay it off? Here's Sanders looking. Sanders winding up. He's got him in. Touchdown! Tavares Dawson. 30 yards. Touchdown pass of the season for Shadur Sanders. Feeling in for the extra point. And it's good. Ten points off turnovers in the last three minutes and three seconds for Colorado. Well, first, it's about protection. Sanders needs time in the pocket in order to get this big, deep over route that's coming from the left side. So he's got the protection to start. Only three guys rushing, and he can wait, wait, and then attack the grass where the corner has vacated his own and Dawson ends up running right to that area and it's an easy throw for Shador Sanders and Colorado finally gets some offense going this defense continues to be put in a tough position by their offense they have answered up until this point and this is one of the areas of the game Gus that Colorado really stresses they call it the middle eight it's the last four minutes of the first half the first four minutes of the second half they won it against TCU with a field goal late came out and scored on their first possession and here they get a turnover again defensively and put it in the end zone in the middle eight the big question though now for Nebraska is who does Matt Rule send onto the field to play quarterback as this one goes into the end zone for a touchdown and that question will be answered right now I think for the psyche of the team it's it's probably got to be Harbor and there it is 
Although now he's walking back to the sidelines and now it looks like Sims is going to be the one that takes it. They're going to stick with Sims here, Gus. I will say it's a tough position. I, I get it. I get it. And, and Sims has got to figure it out. But the tough position is coming in cold in a, in a two-minute type situation. There's only 235 left here. And that might be, we might see a change after halftime. But at this point right now with the crowd noise, this is a precarious spot offensively for Nebraska. First down of the 25 for the Cornhuskers. And he'll hand it off, Irvin. Three yard gain on the play. Trevor Woods with the tackle. And, and this is what you got to think of on both sides. If you're Nebraska, you're probably going to put Sims under center and not in the shotgun. You're probably going to run it three straight times and not let him throw it. So Charles Kelly, the defensive coordinator for Colorado, has to expect that. And he's got to send the kitchen sink right now into that defensive front to stop that run game. Look at this formation. Tight ends, bunch set. These are run sets. Second and seven. Here's the run. And a first down for Nebraska. Marvin Ham with the tackle on Irvin. Gus, there's no reason for all those secondary players to be back like that. Not when you know what's going on on the field. You allow them to just hand the ball off for a first down. They're not going to throw it unless it's an easy play action with Sims. I just don't believe that they will. Not with the half that he's played. So this is an opportunity for Colorado to send all those guys up to the line of scrimmage. Although here we are, shotgun spread set. Now he'll go back under center. First down at the 37. 127 encounter. Play fake. They're going to throw it. Jeff Sims lets it fly. Incomplete. They're going to get a defensive hold or pass interference here in the secondary. There's also a flag down right where Sims let go of that ball. lot to sort out here Sims did take a shot I didn't think it was late it was right when he was delivering but you don't know if the defender took him down to the ground and then drove his weight on the quarterback into the ground that would be roughing the passer and then the flag in the secondary we have offsetting dead ball fouls on each team on sportsmanlike conduct Taunting defense number 33 and sportsmanlike conduct offense number 66 for pulling an opponent off the pile. We also have sideline interference, Colorado. All those penalties offset, down counts, second down. For offsetting penalties. That was like a dissertation right there. Okay. I know. This is the hit on Sims. I couldn't see after he hit. There's some contact right there. And then right here gets in, in his face, and then there's the push. That's the unsportsmanlike, but again, that's the unsportsmanlike that you're going to get as he throws him off. So that'll make it second down and 10 at the 37 with a minute and 19 to go in the first half. Sims in trouble, and Jeff Sims is sacked. Great pressure. Leonard Payne Jr. in on the play. Great rush from the interior. He's lined up on the guard and wins right away. And then you just see the determination to get to the quarterback, but you also see the strength of Sims didn't go down right away. Really no chance for the quarterback there. Boy, Nebraska, after a couple of those positive offensive series, Gus, where they were running the ball, Gabe Irvin had a rhythm going. They had the motion going. And this defense for Colorado, they were fortunate to get the miscues from the quarterback to stop them they missed the field goal they turned it over now three times and the wheels have come off now we don't see any of that run game and albeit inside of two minutes 
But every pass play that Nebraska throws, you can feel the Cornhusker fans take a deep breath. Think about if I was Nebraska here, making sure that this clock is running to force Colorado, Gus, to use a timeout. Colorado with one timeout left, Nebraska with one timeout left. 10 to nothing. Nebraska defense has played extremely well. It's just the one play. It's just a one touchdown pass. That's, I mean, that is all they've given up all day long. But their offense gave Colorado the short field. That's right, several times for the field goal and the touchdown pass. Third down and 17. Sims. Play action. Steps up in the pocket. Wants to run it. And goes out of bounds. Wisely chopped out by Omarion Cooper. No, Gus. He needs to stay in there. And the reason is, is now Colorado retains the timeout. If he goes down inbounds, Colorado has to use it. Now Colorado gets the ball, probably with about 51 seconds left, 50 seconds left, and the timeout. So as he's scrambling, if you're not going to get the line to gain, he's got to go down inbounds. And now Coach Prime is going to send his offense back on the field with a chance to score some points, again, in this middle eight scenario in the game. Last four of the first half, first four of the second. Bushini running it away from the 24. Jimmy Horn, the deep man at the 20 for Colorado. Horn comes up. Takes a bounce, bounces backwards, and is downed at the 36. 26-yard punt. The NFL regular season kicks off tomorrow on Fox with a huge doubleheader. First, Christian McCaffrey and the Niners take on the Steelers or other regional action. Then in America's Game of the Week, Jordan Love leads the Packers against Justin Fields and the Bears, where the Rams battle the Seahawks. It all kicks off tomorrow on Fox. So you're right, 49 seconds to go. Buffalo's with the football. And Colorado with one timeout left. Shadour Sanders. And the Buffalo's finding a little bit of rhythm on offense. Let's see what they can do with this timeout. Here's Sanders. Under pressure. Starts to move. And goes out of bounds at the 40. Well, the secondary has done a marvelous job, Gus, haven't they? Yes, they have. He's just got nowhere to go with the ball, even when they've got a little time in the pocket, which he had there. Nowhere to throw the football, and you can see he's just putting his arms out to the coaching staff, and this secondary has done a terrific job, and, and quite frankly, a bit surprising with the way that the talent on the outside operated last week. I was expecting them to throw the ball well. Second down and eight at the 39. Nebraska jumps offside. Free play for Sanders. Over the middle, caught for first down. Travis Hunter breaks a tackle, still on the move. And it'll go down at the Nebraska 40. Boy, huge completion there. That puts them just on the edge of field goal range. Offside, defense number 11. That penalty is What a move from Hunter after the completion. How about the athleticism of Hunter? Played basically every snap so far in the first half. Remember, Jace Feely kicked a 49-yarder last week against TCU. Sanders, here's that tunnel screen caught by Weaver. Burst of speed, and he gets to the 26-yard line. Almost popped loose, gains 12. I tell you, that was a touchdown-saving tackle right there by Deshaun Singleton. First down to the 27. Sanders, far side, delivers Horn. And he'll pick up a first down. And they jumped offside only because they were trying to flip the defensive lineman there. And so that was a free play as well. Offside.
So they got to be ready to snap it because this clock will start with the official and he's going to wind it right now. Shadur has got to be ready. They have the timeout. They're probably got to start taking shots to the end zone feeling like they are in field goal range here. First down at the 17 for Colorado. Sanders wasted a lot of time. Here's Sanders looking. Sanders sideline throw caught. Wilkerson stays in bounds with the second remaining. Hartzog with the tackle, and Colorado gets a timeout. And that'll bring on Feely for the field goal attempt. I tell you, they got incredibly lucky there. I think that's a mistake from Shadur. He's got to know that that ball needs to go in the end zone or you've got to burn it. You can't throw that ball short of the sticks. And then Wilkerson, he's got to get out of bounds. He's got to get out of bounds. And alertly on the sideline, Dion and his staff were right next to the official to save the second with a timeout and at least get their field goal kicker on the field. So that brings on Jace Feely. Arizona State transfer, one for two last week, good for 49 yards out, had a 49-yarder block. This one Number 17, Jace Feely. from 31 yards out. Already hit a 31-yarder here in the first half. His father, Jay Feely, 14-year NFL veteran in attendance today. And I had a chance to talk to Jay Feely at practice yesterday. He works for CBS Sports as a analyst, just like you, Joel. He's in town to do the Broncos game. And I said, what was it like growing up with your son when he started uh, finally beating you and kicking the football? He was like, man, you know, I realized that I couldn't do it when we would go out to 50 yards and I had no shot. <laughs> That's right. He was, Jay said he was more concerned about his hamstring. That's than right. He was the kick and he knew like, okay, time to pass the torch. Nebraska there calls a timeout. Feely went ahead and kick it. He pushed it right. So last ball off of Feely's foot. No good. Pushed it right. Didn't count. Let's see what goes here. And, and by the way, Nebraska out of timeouts, but even if they had one, they couldn't pull back to back. Here's Shadour Sanders. 500 plus yards last week. Different story this week. This Nebraska defense has limited his explosiveness. 14 of 21, 134 yards. So Feely in the attempt, a 31 yarder. Gets it away. And good. Colorado with 13 points in the final four minutes and 20 seconds of the half. After we were scoreless for 15 and a half minutes. Their first lead over Nebraska at halftime since 2004. Your thoughts on that first half? Well, it, it was really about what Nebraska gave to Colorado. And they got those 13 points late. All right, let's go downstairs to Jenny with Coach Prime. Coach Prime, quickly, on your offense, what are you liking the way they ended that half, and how do you establish that rhythm in the second? We got to have that rhythm. We was all over the place. We were truly erratic, couldn't run the ball. Um, we weren't we wouldn't clicking in all cylinders. I think we beat ourselves up at least five penalties in the first half. That's not indicative of who we are, but the defense has been holding up strong, and I'm proud of that. What's your message to the guys? Because I know this moment went a lot to you getting to this point. Yes, of course, this game is personal. It's only 13 and nothing. We should be up much more than that. But we got to just take care of the little things and we'll be okay. Okay, thank you, Coach. God bless you, Buff Nation. Colorado gets the ball to start the second half with a 13 nothing lead. Coming up, Rob Stone and the guys with the State Farm Halftime Show right here at Folsom Field. Even with how well the Nebraska Cornhuskers defense has played, they still or find themselves at a deficit 13 nothing. So Colorado will get the football to start the second half. Travis Hunter ready to come back on the field on offense this time. Just an electric atmosphere, especially from the student session section here in Boulder. Xavier Weaver 
ready to return as Alvano sends it away into the end zone for a touchback. And let's check in with Jenny. Well, guys, I'm going to start with the positive from Coach Rule, and as expected, extremely pleased with his defense. He said they have been everything I've needed them to be. So happy with the way defensive coordinator Tony White has them playing. They're tackling well. They're disrupting Shadur Sanders. But in terms of their offense, same story, different day. Their quarterback situation, I asked him if we would see backup Heinrich Harburg. He said maybe, but not at this point. The reality is with Sims and those turnovers, you just can't win a game with three turnovers we have to clean it up handle the noise better if we want to stay in this game all right first down and 10 to the 25 yard line for Shadur Sanders and the Buffalo Sanders in trouble sack for the fifth time what a day this defense is having Luke Reimer this time a loss of nine you want to play as a young running back in major college football you got to deal with linebackers like Luke Reimer Dylan Edwards had to block Reimer and Edwards got run over. Reimer, a senior, look at this intensity, runs right over Dylan Edwards, and boy, Shador Sanders is lucky that he ret retained possession. Second down and 19. Edwards out of the backfield this time, gets up the field for positive yardage, but it will bring up a third down and long. Make it 15 for the Buffaloes. Well, you get Ty Robinson back number nine at the defensive line position. He's 6'6", 310 pounds. He's their best defensive lineman. And even though Cameron Linhart was great, number 11, now they're going to have a chance to put both of those guys on the field to rush in these scenarios. Third down and 15. Three receivers at the bottom of your screen. Sanders. Empty backfield. Here's Shadour with time. Shador in trouble. Sanders breaks contained, fires it down the field, and caught by Travis Hunter. On third and 15, he gets 42. What a beautiful adjustment by Hunter, and he gets away with a little hold right there. Doesn't extend his arm, which is so smart. That's the nuance of wide receiver that, quite frankly, I'm surprised he has. See how he doesn't extend his arm? Doesn't draw the offensive pass interference and gets the catch. Three catches, 73 yards for Travis Hunter. Big 42-yard gain on that last play. Edwards running it. Ty Robinson defensively. For the Huskers. Boy, and I tell you, that's one of the first times all day outside of the touchdown pass that we've seen a free receiver in that secondary. Second down and six at the 36 underneath. And the ball caught. Nicely done. Dawson with the grab. How about the tackle from Newsom, right? Gus, that's what I think has been so good for Nebraska. Some good open field tackling. Great tackling in the open field. We have not seen those runners get much after the catch. Third down and one. Sanders. Guns it and the ball caught by Horn and he loses two yards on the plate. Sean Singleton defensively. Down by number five, John Bullock. Boy, it looks like they're going to stay on the field here. Well, fourth and three. Fourth down and three. Dylan Edwards right next to Sanders. It looks like they're coming, which means Dylan Edwards is going to have to block one of these linebackers. Earlier on this series, he got run over. And they run the reverse. Horn trying to get around the corner. Nothing to do it. Great defense by this Nebraska Cornhusker squad. Tell you what, this defense is balling out. They have been aggressive, well-prepared, and disciplined. Brown that time. Omar Brown. Johnny on the spot. And Colorado turns it over on downs. Let's see what Nebraska can do on offense after this. Welcome back. 13 to nothing. Colorado leading Nebraska here in the third quarter. First down and 10 at the 34-yard line for the Huskers. Sims handing it off to Irvin, trying to get outside. And he's bottled up, cuts it back in and gains three. Trevor Woods 
with the tackle. Really like watching Trevor Woods play. Yep. Junior from Katy, Texas, and he's kind of stuck it out around here. Yeah, he has. He was one of the players that, one of the few, you should say. There was only nine players that came back. He's one of the few that retained a position as a starter, and they said that he just got better every single day, and he would show up and make plays. An interception last week against TCU. He's played well today. Second down and seven. Sims on the move. And that ball caught at midfield. Marcus Washington. First down for Nebraska. I'll tell you what, Jeff Sims has talent, Joel. I don't know if it, psychologically this turning the football over is in his head or not, but he's got some skills. There's, there's some athleticism, there's no doubt. And what they have to do is that they've got to put him in positions to succeed. And they do that by keeping him under center often. I would not go in the shotgun. He's dropped two shotgun snaps. First down at midfield. Sims. And Sims is sacked in the backfield again. Terrific defense. Alston getting there this time. The West Virginia transfer. Pressure up front is something we didn't see a week ago. No sacks, no tackles for loss against TCU, and that front has shown up, and they've done a nice job presenting some pressure on Jeff Sims. Taj Alston, second Colorado sack of the day. Second down and 17 at the 43. Sims, he'll run it this time with a lane. It's a sideline. He can move. Sims down the sideline at the 10. Five touchdown, Nebraska. That's what you want from Jeff Sims. 57 yards. They're going to motion to an empty backfield. Here's the motion. Watch Colorado. The linebacker is going to vacate his area right here. When that happens, Jeff Sims has a lane. It's a design quarterback draw. There's no way he's throwing this ball. Linemen get up to the second level. You got a wide receiver. Great block on the safety, Trevor Woods. And now it's just speed from Jeff Sims. Colorado, wrong defensive call at the wrong time. Nebraska takes advantage. Beautiful run. Alvado in to attempt the extra point. And it's good. Four plays covering 66 yards. Big Red scoring in two minutes and 10 seconds. Sims going to his bread and butter. Running the rock. 13-7. Moore leading the Huskers. It was Nebraska's last year in the Big 12. And the win sent them to the Big 12 championship game. 13-7. Jeff Sims. Nice to see something positive happening for this young man. It's been a struggle to start the season. Let's see if he can build on that as this ball is kicked out. I love what they did game plan wise, right, Gus? They got him involved in the run game. All right. Skip Bayless, I guess after the first couple of shows, had to explain to some of his guys that they were having a failure to communicate. <laughs> now Skip is talking a whole lot more. The all-new Undisputed is here. Undisputed is here. Skip is back. Joined by legends Richard Sherman, Michael Irvin, and Keith Sean Johnson. Undisputed weekdays at 9.30 Eastern, only on FS1. Boy, I tell you what, we got some killers. Keith Sean, Michael Irvin, Richard Sherman. With the head dog, Skip Bates. First down and 10 of the 25. And it's Hankerson. By Ty Robinson for yard game. So this Nebraska front has controlled the game. This is what allows them to just sit in coverage, and that's why Shadur Sanders can't find anybody open. That defensive line has done a great job. They're winning and getting to the quarterback with only a four-man and five-man rush at, at times. That's what's making life so difficult for Colorado right now. Second down and six. Underneath. Caught by his tight end, Michael Harrison. Michael Harrison. Michael Harrison. Picking up eight yards on the play. Omar Brown defensively. Buffaloes quickly to the line of scrimmage. Sanders incomplete. 
That one thrown behind the target that time. Yeah, just a lack of execution from this Colorado offense really all day. They've been on the wrong page, the wide receivers and the quarterback. And this was the fear. You know, I know that the coaching staff said, no, we're hungry. We're going to be, we're not going to be complacent. But you had the whole world telling this offense how great they were all week long. It's human nature to come out here and not play as well and execute as well, which we've seen. Second down and 10. Here's the Sanders looking, and he'll just dump this one at the feet of his target. And something does when it comes to this Colorado offense, Joel, kind of looks like it, it may not be broken, but needs to be fixed. Well, it's stagnant because Nebraska's controlling the game with the front four and five. Then it's tough for any offense, Gus. It doesn't matter what you're trying to do. When you can't run it on a, on a defense, defensive front that's not getting secondary help, and when you can't protect the passer when they're only rushing four, it's going to be tough all day long. And now you've got everybody up for Nebraska right at the line of scrimmage. Third down and 10 at the 37. A lot of room over the middle. Sanders in trouble. Fires. Open. Caught. Down the sideline. And at the 20-yard line goes Xavier Weaver. Nebraska gambled. They send everybody. It's one-on-one -on, -one on the outside. And that's just a blown coverage. Weaver runs right by the corner. And it's an easy completion for Shador Sanders. One of the first times we've seen the coverage break down for the Cornhusker D. Weaver. Five catches. They're going to try to see if he caught that, Gus. I think they're going to take another look at this as he went down to the ground. As it stands, it's a 41-yard reception. Encroachment. Offense. Number six. Has lined up well beyond the ball. Five-yard penalty. First down. Wow, that's... That's a huge mistake right there. That's Dawson who cut the touchdown pass, and Matt Rule saw his defense gamble there, a little risk-reward, and they got burned because of it on a long third down. First down and 15. Here's the run over the right side for Anthony Hankerson. That's exactly what Coach Sanders wants to see even when it's only four, five, or six in the run game, is that you're now causing Nebraska to have to answer the question, do we want to commit safeties to help stop the run? That's what Colorado needs to do in this second half if they want to open up some of this passing game on the outside. Second down and eight at the 20. Hankerson remains in the game. Shadur Sanders over the middle. Caught by Hankerson. And Anthony Hankerson has a first down. Hankerson a sophomore. And one of the few holdovers just like Trevor Woods defensively. First down at the Nebraska 12. Ground attack, half yard gain for Hankerson. Wallen with the tackle. By number 93. This is when it gets difficult to throw the ball. And the reason is because Nebraska is just sitting in zone coverage. So what do you want to throw inside the red zone like this? You've got to sit in space. So you've got to run hook routes, in particular over the middle, find space around linebackers. And those guys have got to sit down for the quarterback. See if he looks for a tight end. Here's Sanders. And the end zone. Incomplete. Wow. Dylan Edwards was open. Maybe the worst throw we've seen from Shadour in the last couple of games. That one, actually, it was a great throw. Yeah, My I was going to say, that was beautiful. Looks like it shoulder. turned him around. Edwards kind of looked on the wrong side. He should be looking over the inside shoulder. That's where the ball came. Sanders threw it perfectly, but now, Gus, another one of these third down scenarios. Third down at 10 at the 12. Shadour Sanders under pressure, bounces, takes his time, guns it, touchdown, Buffalo! Xavier Weaver! And the Colorado Buffaloes are starting to find their mojo. 12-yard catch. 10-play drive, covering 75 yards. Watch the block by Edwards, Gus. 
The running back gets it done. We saw him run over earlier, so what does he do? He goes low. That allows Sanders to slide out to the left. And then Weaver did a beautiful job of not stopping his route. He continues into the end zone and finds the space in that zone. Sanders finds Weaver, and it's a touchdown for Colorado. Shadour Sanders, 22 of 32, 351 yards passing, two touchdowns. Six touchdowns in two games. No picks in two games. This one, thing of beauty. Weaver. And Colorado extends their lead. My team, I watch my wrist, my how's my rise and grind. I give away all the Deion Sanders, who could forget? It's almost like we've grown up watching him. Yeah. At Florida State, he comes out, he's neon Dion. He's got rap videos, he's got the Jerry Curl, he's got the sweet dance moves, and he's one of the best players out there. Who would have thought that? As time went on, Coach Sanders matures into this wonderful coach and a leader of young men. And in a sense, he's aggregated the African-American college football fan. A lot. Well, there is no doubt that the story of college football and Gus, I think, of the entire sports world is what Deion Sanders is doing at Colorado after last week. Every show, every op opinion that you can possibly imagine being lobbed towards this program and Coach Sanders, and he always handles it in stride. First down and 10 at the 25 for Nebraska, and here's that Colorado defense stepping up big, swarming, gang tackling, wonderful job. Dominic leading the way, a loss of 12 yards on the play. Let's go downstairs to Jen. Well, we've been talking about Coach Prime and, of course, telling his story. We know Coach Prime. We know the history. We know who he was as a player, but who he is as a coach. And what we've learned in talking to him, it's always about the players. It always goes back to the players. And that goes back to the truth days. He has always wanted to be a mentor and someone that these young men can look to. It's all about Coach Prime, a ministry of coaching, if you will, so far. Second down and 22 for Sims. Underneath, ball caught at the 18-yard line by Kim in front of Shiloh Sanders. Leon Sanders, he started coaching at the Little League level. As a matter of fact, he coached Dylan Edwards when he was four years old, all the way through high school in Jackson State. Now Colorado. Who are your thoughts? Joel, as a Colorado alum, a former football player here when Coach Prime was named their head coach. I was ecstatic. There's only a couple of people that can drive the type of narrative and excitement and exposure that he can, and he certainly has done that. And this is about talent acquisition, and he can certainly do that as well. Third down at 16. Incomplete for Sims. Had a receiver, Alex Bullock, the walk-on, who received a scholarship this year and had a big touchdown last week against Minnesota on the road. But that will force this Nebraska team to punt it away. And that that's just an unforced error, a miscue in and of itself, because Sims gets the protection. This is a beautiful throw. It's right on the money, and Bullock has got to rein that in. Wide receiver is where this team is weakest. A few former walk-ons out there. They got a DB now moved over out there. That's a rough sledding on the outside. Horn goes to the sideline, picks it up at the 35, and steps out of bounds. 20 to 7. Buffaloes with the lead. The offense has been getting a lot of attention, but Colorado leading Nebraska 505 to go in the third quarter. And Joel, you feel like it might be time for Shadour Sanders and this Colorado team to take a shot. Well, it's it's they've got the field position. They just established a little bit of a rhythm. Watch out, like if they get a first down here, ball's near the 50. I just feel like they're gonna try to go over the top and try to get a quick touchdown. This Nebraska defense, though, has been great. First down and 10 at the 34, Sanders. That one deflected it somehow into the hands of Edwards. 
Did that ball just pop up in the air? Well, he, it looked like he was trying to take the shot right there. Watch this, Gus. He's coming back, and it looks like he's trying to go deep, but the ball floats out of his hands because of the pressure hit his arm. And how about Edwards? Like a center fielder in the outfield just tracks it and gets the catch. He gained seven yards on the play. Full start. Offense, number 12. Five-yard penalty. That's Travis Hunter. I mean, look at this. So his arms definitely hit, and the ball comes out, and that's when Dylan Edwards becomes like a center fielder. Nebraska couldn't get their head around, and Edwards corrals it in. Even my, even the playmaker is saying, "Look at that! Look at that!" <laughs> Michael Irvin. Second down and eight at the 36. Here's a handoff. Edwards. the little guy go 34 yard gain Javen Wright with the tackle beautiful block on the right side by 78 Savion Washington that's why he got the edge and how about the Jets on number three first down at the 30 Sanders bouncing Sanders throwing caught at the 15 yard line and it's Xavier Weaver and quietly, folks, Xavier Weaver is looking like the number one target for Shadur Sanders. Boy, he was great last week. And look, just over the outstretched arms of the linebacker, that ball looked like it was going to get tipped or picked, and it got through. Weaver, good concentration to corral that one in. First down at the Nebraska 11, delayed handoff, Edwards. And he stood up at the six-yard line. Weaver with seven catches for 112 yards for Colorado. And now Shadur really starting to throw that ball. He's got 277 passing yards. Uh, and, and this offense, it, listen, it hasn't been pretty. Too many penalties. Defense has played really well. But now you're seeing the rhythm here and some of those athletes in space that we've been talking about all week. Second and six at the seven-yard line. Hankerson in the backfield. Sanders looking. End zone. And a flag. Travis Hunter, the intended receiver. Looks like somebody may have held him. Omar Brown. Hard zone. Pass interference. Defense number 13. By rule, the ball will be placed at the two-yard line. First and ten. First and goal. Excuse me. Malcolm Hartzog call for the penalty. They're trying to clear out the zone and then just bring Hunter into the back of the end zone. And you can see absolutely being held right there. Can't get to the ball. Flag comes out. Playmaker, how many times did he think he called for a flag at the end of an incomplete pass in his life? Maybe every one that he didn't catch, he was calling for a flag. First down and goal at the two-yard line. They got that defensive lineman in, Gus 95. Fullback. Savion Wilkerson, the pistol back. Sanders on the play fake. Reverses, lets it fly. Incomplete. Hunter couldn't hold on. Well defended by Quentin Newsom. Quentin Newsom in coverage. They were trying to sneak those big guys out in the flat on the right. Good defense by Nebraska, and there's Newsom. I tell you what, Newsom did a great job of. Even though he never turned to defend the ball, he wasn't contacting Hunter until the ball arrived, and then he fought through the hands of the wide receiver. That's a beautiful job by the corner. Second down and goal at the two. Not a lot of room. Number 36 in Wilkerson gets to the line of scrimmage, really no gain on the play. And with the struggles of the Nebraska offense so far today, this is a must. They have to force a field goal here. I would think that Colorado might even go for it on fourth down, knowing that a score here to put them away. It could put them away with what we've seen offensively from Nebraska. Huge play right here, and then decision for Coach Prime and that staff. Third down and goal at the one. Dylan Edwards in the backfield. Sanders will throw it. Sanders steps up. Sanders sacked at the 13. They brought pressure. Nebraska gets it done. 
Only thing you can't do as a quarterback right here is take a sack. This is a huge mistake from Shadur Sanders. Nice pressure right there from ne Nebraska. Reimer gets into the backfield, number four. Nowhere to throw it, and now they force Colorado into a field goal. Huge play for the Huskers' defense. Riley Van Poppel, number 94, getting the pressure on Sanders. Feely in for the field goal, and it's good from 30 yards out. 23 to 7, 120 to go in the third. Well, you've been talking about him, Gus. Xavier Weaver is our good hands playmaker, sponsored by Allstate. You're in good hands. Boy, he's been terrific, as you've been talking about. He has. Seven catches now, 112 yards after having 100 yards the last week. Winning on the outside in one-on-one, -on -one, finding the zone, the open space for the touchdown. That was beautiful concentration as the ball floated over the linebacker. And Weaver is a guy that we didn't talk a lot about. One of the four that had 100 yards a week ago against TCU, and he has come out and really backed up that performance. Xavier Weaver, the transfer from USF from South Florida. And this is his fifth career 100-yard game. Back to back, Gus. He had 116 catches in his career at South Florida, you know, so he can play. There's no doubt. 53 catches, 718 last year. Six touchdowns, second team all AAC by the coaches. Next week, Big New checks in on the Big Ten as Penn State travels to Illinois for the first time since their epic game that went to nine overtimes. And if we're being honest, we're hoping for a short game <laughs> this time around. Regardless, Jenny, Joe, and I will be joined by the big new kickoff crew Saturday at 10 a.m. Eastern, only on Fox. How's Illinois looking this year, Joe? Well, they, they've struggled so far. Remember, they lost a lot of those secondary players. They lost their defensive coordinator, Ryan Walters. Buffs fans, you know him well. He started at safety here in Boulder. Now the head coach of Purdue. They lost to Kansas last night. Illinois did. But I tell you, that Penn State team, Gus, that's a good team. That is a Are they finally team. ready to compete with Michigan and Ohio State? I think so. I like. I like Penn State's quarterback. Yeah, Drew Aller, he's, he's a terrific player. You know, there's a lot of guys emerging this year. One of them is Travis Hunter right here, you know, in this game. I know he hasn't. Had the spectacular play like he did a week ago, but here he is, 90 total snaps. Look at this, 53 on offense, 37 on defense. Had a big catch down the field. He just does it all. First down and 15 to the 20. Sims, quarterback draw. Still moving. And Jeff Sims gets close to the 40. You just have to assume, if you're the Colorado defense, you have to assume run first all the time and then react to the pass off of that. Even if they're in spread sets and shotgun, then you've got to assume, like the touchdown run, Gus, that it's that way for a reason. They're trying to open up space for Jeff Sims in the run game. First down at the 37. Sims looking Sims sideline throw nice check down has his tight end and a first down for Nebraska I love to see it you talk about a bounce back here in the third quarter the touchdown run that was a beautiful job of scanning through his progression getting all the way to the last guy in the progression finding the completion manipulating the pocket all of those things Jeff Sims getting a little confidence here in the third quarter That'll take us to the end of the third quarter. Let's see if they get this one off. I don't think so. And that'll take us to the end of the third with the score 23 to 7, Colorado leading Nebraska as we head to the fourth year in Boulder. Second quarter off of those mistakes offensively from Nebraska, but the offense clicking here, Gus, in the third quarter. Shador Sanders finding a rhythm, but here Jeff, Jeff Sims getting a little confidence with this Nebraska offense to start the fourth. 
Sims under center, hands it off to Irvin. And Irvin, a fumble. Wow. Again. Bishop Thomas recovers it. Another exchange. This one not center quarterback related. It was Gabe Irvin and Jeff Sims. They're trying to run a counter play. Sims faking the ball to the left side and then trying to get the handoff over the right. There is a flag down far side. We'll have to get the announcement. I don't think I've ever seen So, Gus, here's the exchange. Watch, he's going counter here. Okay, fake it over the left. Now a handoff over the top. That is short. Every Listen to me, quarterbacks out there, young quarterbacks. You are responsible for the handoff. That ball has got to get into the pocket for the running back. The quarterback has got to let his eyes be the guide, take you in there. Here's the penalty at the end. There's where they got Shiloh Sanders, 21, for the unsportsmanlike conduct. But another quarterback mistake, Gus, puts the ball on the ground. And they'll run it. Hankerson. And I don't think I've ever seen in all my years of calling games something like this that's happened where a team's quarterback is mishandled snaps and fumbled the ball continuously over a two-game span and and these are i mean there's or turned it over continuously over over two games span. i will guarantee you these types of turnovers have not happened in camp this is just kind of like out of the blue you can't prepare for this sanders first down weaver again turns it up Xavier Weaver stopped by Omar Brown. This, this defense has got to start feeling like they're a little gassed, don't, don't you? They've I've been on like, the field a lot. Yeah, and this is what they had to avoid. They had to keep their offense on the field. First down at the 47. And Colorado using a little bit of clock, not going at that hyper tempo that they want to start the game with. False start there. False start. Sloppy. 65. Offense. Five yard penalty. Still first down. That's Zach. Jack Bailey. Left guard. Trying to get the motion across. Yep, right there. Just a little flinch. Flag came out. Puts him behind the chains here. It does seem like they're trying to slow down. And remember, their coordinator, Gus, he's a former head coach. He was a head coach last year at Kent State. And Sean Lewis comes here. Head coach mentality right now, trying to slow it down. First down at 50. And they run it. Hankerson. He'll gain two yards as he tumbles forward. Stopped on the play by Elijah Judy. Aren't they methodical right now? I mean, yes. this is so different than the start of the game. 23-7 lead and smart. I mean, this is smart football from Colorado offensively. Second down and 13 at the 44. Here's Sanders. Sanders finding Jimmy Horn. And Deion Sanders told a great story yesterday in our meeting. Flag on the play about Jimmy Horn after the great game, 100-yard game he had last week. Yeah, we'll, we'll get the announcement, but, you know, Jimmy is a guy that they recruited to Jackson State, first of all. And, you know, Jimmy's father is incarcerated, and the conversation between Jimmy and Jimmy's father, excuse me, and Dion went about like you would expect. Jimmy's father said, take care of my boy, and Dion says, I got you. After the play was over, unnecessary roughness, personal foul, offense. Number 73, 15-yard penalty. Here's the end of the play. You're going to see, well, first, Nebraska gets away with that one right there. That's Ty Robinson, and he threw down Hankerson, number nine, and then that's the, the second. Landon Beebe, 73, gets the flag. But just to finish that story up, yes, last week after the game, Coach Prime almost came to tears in our meeting talking about Jimmy Horn calling his dad 
and that conversation and listening over that conversation after that great performance last week. Here's Sanders over the middle, caught by guess who? Jimmy Horn. And Junior picks up big yardage. 17. Outside. Defense number 14. That penalty is declined. Result of the play. First and 10, Colorado. Jimmy Horn looks at Coach Sanders like a father figure and a mentor, and this is why he wanted to be here. And he also wanted to play in this offense, and he had a huge game a week ago and a nice big catch there. First down and 10 at the 42, Shadour to Weaver. Xavier Weaver continues to rack up big yardage as that catch in front of Malcolm Hartzog. And Weaver is just lighting up the stat sheet. Now, what is it? Nine for 124, Gus, or, or nine for 131, excuse me, and the touchdown. And Shador finally in a rhythm, taking some of these easy throws that Nebraska is giving him. Here's a run by Hankerson. Now Colorado starting to lean on this Nebraska team. Gained 14 yards. Isaac Gifford with the tackle. But this Nebraska defense has been on the field for such a long time today. And finally starting to give up some of those runs that we've heard about at halftime. And that's what's opening things up on the outside. Far side throw. Horn picks his way forward. Looks like he's got another first down. Jimmy Horn Jr. The other part of this is that Nebraska had tackled so well early in the game in space as Horn is getting looked at right there. Looks like he might have cramped up with that right leg, Gus, after the catch and run. They stopped the run with the front seven, and then they tackled well in space. But here in the last couple of drives, we've seen a couple of broken tackles. How about Travis Hunter blocking out in front? Horn, nice little hurdle towards the line to gain. Gets the first down as he goes out of bounds. First down and goal at the eight-yard line. Trick play here. Dawson, can he get there? Touchdown, Colorado! Tarvarish Dawson, his second score of the day. And the Buffaloes take a 29-7 lead. I'll tell you, the ball handling here from Sanders, watch right here, he's gonna fake the little shovel pass first, then the option, and then he flips it to Dawson, who's got lead blockers in front of him. Beautiful move and a great block out in front. That was Savion Washington, number 78. Dawson gets himself inside, dives for the end zone. Beautiful job. They'll go for two. Sanders, now the offense. Here's Sanders. Looking, steps up, buys time, still on his feet, trying to make something happen across his body. Hankerson, did he get in? Looks like he, I think it's good. I think they're calling that a catch. But Shadour may have stepped out of bounds, I'm not sure. He was awfully close. This is the end. Does Hankerson get his hands under this? I don't think he did. They called that a catch. They'll take a look at this. There is flags on the play. Shador took his helmet off after the play, which I'm sure would be an unsportsmanlike. The ruling on the field is that the catch was good for a two-point conversion. That play is under free review. However, after the play, on sportsmanlike conduct, number two, Colorado, for removing the side. Here's the end of that throw. Gus. Watch his foot. He stays oh, in. He stays in. And then after he thinks it's good, as he pops back up, this is what he does. He rips his helmet off right here, and that's what draws the flag. So there's your unsportsmanlike. And then the catch, you know, I'm sure they're going to take a look at this, but, man, 
How about Hankerson? It's hard to say it's not a catch. You're right, because those those arms, are, are they under the ball? Called good on the field. Beautiful adjustment from Hankerson. Right there. Boy. I mean, Gus, if, if you're just asking me to reofficiate the play, I my hunch is that it's incomplete. This is probably the best look. Yeah, that's incomplete. There's not control before that ball hits the ground. That last look was the best one. Even this one is tough. See the ball hits right there. He doesn't have control of that. Ball can touch the ground if he's got control, but he doesn't he doesn't have control. This is the, a beautiful look right here. That, ball's on, that ball's on the ground. Yeah. Like the schedule. Yeah. Right now, the score reading 31 to 7, but looks like they'll wipe this one off the board, the two points. 10.45 to play in the fourth quarter. I'll tell you, that, that was a good drive by that offense, wasn't it? Going into this game, Colorado favored by. Really, it was three, three and a half, but it was going down to two and a half. And they have answered here. And I'll tell you what, last week, seven, wasn't it? After further review, the ball hit the ground before the receiver gained firm control. Therefore, it's an incomplete pass. The try is no good. The 15-yard penalty for unsportsmanlike conduct will be enforced on the kickoff. Well, that flipped to a three and a half favorite. It was going down to two and a half, and here they are, up 22 in the fourth quarter. And they were 20-point underdogs last week at TCU. Am I correct? Yeah, 20, 20 and a half. That's right. And and this this team. I don't understand how Vegas is getting it wrong. They usually get it right <laughs> well, all the time. Listen, they normally do. Those buildings don't build themselves. You know what I mean? But right. I, I will tell you, this is. I think. To your point, Gus, this this is why everyone is so interested in what's going on here at Colorado with Deion Sanders. It's because they are way ahead of where anyone believed they would be, whether it was Vegas, you know, analysts like myself, anybody that's talking about sports. No one thought that they were going to do this in the first couple of weeks. No one thought they were going to beat TCU on the road and then come back and have a 29-7 lead in the fourth quarter over, over Nebraska. Like, it... I went here. I didn't think that was going to happen. They are overachieving at every moment. They'll be at home against Colorado State next week, and then they're on the road at Oregon. Here's Sims with the option. Deals it down, and a nice play as Johnson lowers his shoulder, gets out of bounds. Shiloh Sanders with the tackle. So now it's a three-possession game for Nebraska, so they've got to go as quickly as they possibly can. Got to be thinking about trying to score with about nine minutes here you kind of set those benchmarks for yourself if you're trying to build a comeback second down and one 10 16 to play a lot of time left in this game johnson running it jeremiah brown with the tackle you know on, on this series i bet you you're going to get a, a shotgun back motion out of the backfield you're going to get a jeff sims quarterback draw on this it might be right here if they motion out of the backfield first down and 10 at the 40 sims Pulls it down, decides to run it, and Sims finally tackled by Shiloh Sanders after he gains four. It's tough for Sims in the pocket, even when he has time, because this wide receiver group, they don't have the depth and talent to win on the outside against corners like Cooper and Hunter, so there's nowhere to go with the football. Second and six. Play fake. Sims rolling out. And Sims gets rid of it out of bounds. And Sims getting up slowly. Been a rough day for this young man from Jacksonville, Florida. It was good pressure by Savelle Smalls. Transfer from Washington, number 13. He was the one chasing Sims. Here he is. There's Smalls. And I think he lands on that left foot. Yeah, he did. Gus, you see how he lands right there? And that, it kind of bends backwards. And that's why Sims is on the ground. Heinrich. 
Harper. Security for more than 150 years. This third quarter, Buffs got it going offensively. Xavier Weaver with that 12-yard catch. Dawson, nice little end around. He found the end zone, and that offense started rolling. And here's Harburg, who checks in for Sims. Nebraska backup quarterback Heinrich Harburg. Third year in the program, but he hasn't thrown a pass in a game, hasn't thrown a pass in competition since 2020 in high school in Kearney, Nebraska. And he is the first in-state scholarship quarterback for Nebraska in over 20 years. Heinrich Harburg, first and 10 for 46. Hands it off. Irvin, number 23. Gained a yard on the play. Let's go downstairs and check in with Jen. Well, Jeff Sims back off the medical table. They were evaluating his left ankle. It has been retaped. He told the medical staff he will be fine. He's up moving a little gingerly, guys, but telling everyone he's good to go to finish this one out. All right, thank you very much. So Sims should be coming back on the field, second down and nine at the 45. Harburg. Play fake to throw it winds up goes deep nobody there incomplete Billy Kemp the closest man to the football boy Harbor took a hard hit in the pocket he tried to stand in there and get this ball down the field and watch right here bam takes a hit goes down the helmet came off and Sims tried to run back out there, but now we're to the third string. This is Chuba Purdy. You know his brother Brock Purdy. Plays obviously for the 49ers, his college ball at Iowa State. And here's Chuba, transferred from Florida State. He was a four-star quarterback, Gus. Top 200 player out of high school. Hasn't done much, but here a chance on a big third down. Third down and nine at the 45 for Purdy. Game clock op operator, please reset the game to clock to 8.07. 8.07. The clock will go on a snap. He's more of a passing threat than Sims or Harbor. And an opportunity here. Third down. And nine, Purdy looking. That ball deflected at the line of scrimmage. And it looks like it may have been caught. Bishop Thomas with the deflection. Joshua Fleeks, the target. There's a flag down late over there. That they did rule that incomplete, Gus. And now there's a flag on the far side. Colorado bench. Well, they better get ready here defensively, and I think Nebraska go up for it on fourth and nine. Yeah, they've got to three possession game. Harburg back in the game. Here's Harburg looking, hit as he throws incomplete. Levante Bentley. Bringing pressure. And Nebraska turns it over on downs. Here's Bentley at linebacker. He actually lost his starting job this week after last week. They, th they felt like they could improve in the run defense, but here he is late in the game getting another opportunity. And boy, great closing speed from Levante Bentley, and he provides the hit and the pressure that gets Colorado off the field on fourth down. Transferred in from Clemson, Gus. He had 73 tackles in his career at Clemson. Five and a half sacks. And that was a big play for this CU defense. Colorado with the lead and the ball when we return. Colorado leading Nebraska. Shadour Sanders having another great day. 29 of 40. 300. 38 yards, two touchdowns, no picks. You know, hand it off straight ahead on first down. Dylan Edwards is wrapped up as he bounces it out, gains four. Kobe Bretz with the tackle. 
They'll obviously go slow here, be a little bit deliberate. I'm impressed with the, this this team's response. Hasn't been a very well played game, really either, either side. Colorado hasn't played that well offensively, far too many penalties, but they've responded at big moments and made big plays. Buffs keeping it on the ground. Edwards trying to work that clock now. 7:16 and counting. Reminds Luke Reimer defensively, and it reminds me. Gus of our meeting with Sean Lewis when we asked him, you know, what were you most proud of a week ago against TCU? As that's Van Wells who gets up a little gimpy. He's the center. And he said, the way we responded, our response. Remember last week, their last three touchdowns, they were behind every one of those possessions and had to score in, or in order to take the lead, and they were able to do that. And there's been some adversity in this game as well. Where they've had to respond and they were able to do that and they responded to a really poorly played half with a touchdown at the end of the half and then they came out here found some run game and Shadour settled down and they started finding those completions big credit to Xavier Weaver who started finding the space in the secondary Gus he's had a huge day 131 yards nine catches third down and six at the 48 Another big day for Shadour Sanders underneath. He's got Weaver again. Look for the first with a block. Weaver and a burst. Still on the move. Stays on his feet and finally goes down deep in Nebraska territory. A gain of 40 yards. The X-Man, Xavier Weaver. Boy, the speed that this team puts on the field. Little tunnel screen in the middle of the field. And Weaver after he catches it did a beautiful job staying behind the lineman finding and reading those blocks and then he accelerates downfield here's sanders and sanders sacked colorado having some pass protection issues jamari butler with the sack deon sanders disappointed in terms of Watching his son get sacked countless times today. Well, and, and but to be honest, there was a couple of those that were protection errors. Some of them, Shador has held the ball way too long and then taken a sack, hasn't thrown it away. Seventh sack of the day for Nebraska. That's certainly something they're going to have to clean up because when you keep him clean, man, he is a dangerous passer. 30 of 35 a week ago, but he's been under duress too much today. Here's Sanders to throw it. Steps up in the pocket, holds on to it, guns it, caught by his tight end, Michael Harrison. That was a beautiful job of escaping the pressure, and then Sanders was going to take a hit. I feel like he felt that and still stood in there as he was evading the rush to the right and found his tight end, Harrison, who did a beautiful job of coming back to his quarterback and providing a target. Third down and three at the five-yard line as we approach the five-minute mark of the fourth quarter. Shadur Sanders looking. Steps up, wants a run. Touchdown, Colorado. This time he does it with his legs. And that's an old-school Dion. Prime time. Dan to the end zone for Shadur. That's his dad. Neon Dion. How often did you practice that day? <laughs> Every touchdown, if you're 41, you play football in America. You know, as well as I know, in the backyard, every time you scored, you did the Deion Sanders, <laughs> and Shador does it right there. Seven of their last eight drives, they've scored. Haven't punted, Gus, since 538 in the second. You talk about response, finding rhythm. That offense exploded in this second half. Sanders, former teammates, best buds, the playmaker, and prime. Wow. Some powerful names on the sideline to watch Colorado football. And 
Buffalo sends it away deep in the end zone for a touchback. How about Shadur Sanders? Another great game for this young man. Yeah, and, and again, it's it's more about the response because things weren't going their way early in this game. The pressure has been immense, and yet he continues to stand in there. He's safe with the ball. I've said he's taken some sacks that he shouldn't have. Well, at least he didn't throw any interceptions. And then all of a sudden you look up and it's like, my goodness, 31 of 42, 394 yards and two touchdowns. And you look at what he did at half. You went in there. If you're Colorado and you got on that whiteboard and you figured some things out, they ran the ball a little bit, they found the open space, and Sanders played really well here in the second half. Under five minutes to go, they'll run it with Johnson, and Johnson knocked out of bounds. But I guess it's safe to say now, and Dion said it in his press conference last week after game one, that he thought his son should be a Heisman candidate. Throw for close to 400 yards yeah. in the second game. He certainly is a Heisman candidate. A hundred percent. There's no doubt. You know, if Travis Hunter continues to play both sides and, and produce, he's going to be in that conversation. Incomplete. Harbor in for Jeff Sims. There's Hunter. Had a big day offensively. Travis Hunter really been able to catch the ball. Hunter, three catches for 73 yards. Second down and 10. And they hand it off. Nothing doing. Johnson stopped by J.J. Hawkins as well as Taj McCoy. You know, rightly so, we talk about the way this offense played in the second half. How about the defense all game? This defense has played so well. The defensive front seven it largely shut down Nebraska. Really, they only had that long run from Sims. For the touchdown outside of that this defense has been airtight third down 11 and that will caught nice grab as thomas fedoni goes up high to get it harper putting that one in a good spot and, and you see the talent from fedoni right there look at him just reach out and pluck that out of the air that's something that I think Nebraska has got to incorporate into this offense. If they're going to be a run-oriented offense, you've got to throw it to the tight ends more often. Huskers going for it on fourth down and one. They stopped them. My like when he did stop them on fourth and one. Stoutmeyer. Levante Bentley combining. And Colorado says they have it. Wow. Wow. Remember, this is a big-time rivalry, folks. It's the same rivalry as Michigan-Ohio State, Auburn, Alabama, or Texas OU. Certainly is that for if you're someone like me. I grew up 20 minutes south of here. And I'm just I'm blown away by this defense for Colorado. I know Nebraska's got some offensive struggles. There's no doubt. But think about it, Gus. This Colorado defense gave up 42 points, 541 total yards, 262 of those on the ground last week in that win over TCU. And they've come out here and, and have just shut down Nebraska completely. New quarterback in for Colorado. This is Stout. Stout handing it off on first down to Charlie Offerdahl. Coach Prime allowing some of the subs to get some burn here late in the fourth quarter. Approaching the three-minute mark. Stop freshman from Stevens Ranch, California, West Ranch High School. And the Buffaloes will pick up a first down. You look at this schedule upcoming, Gus. They got Colorado State in-state rival next week. Then a huge, I mean, now all of a sudden, just a massive road trip to Eugene to face the Ducks. They will host USC September 30th, and then Arizona State and Stanford. I mean, the, the way that now we look at this schedule for Colorado is just vastly different. Remember, you talked about Vegas earlier. They had their 
win total at three over under for the season. And they've got two if they can hold on to win this game. 220 left, 36 to 7. Talk about it. Uh, what do they say? First impressions? Or lasting ones. They are, aren't they? Yes. Coach Prime in his first two games, the head coach of the University of Colorado, went on the road, beat the defending national runner-up as a 20-point dog, and then came back home, and in his home debut, beat the hated Nebraska Cornhuskers in a rivalry game. And you know what Coach Prime will probably say? I expected this. Exactly. You didn't. I did. <laughs> but I did. That's what, that's what he would say. Did you notice he looked at me when he said that? Yes, no, no, he didn't. Like, oh, no, he didn't. Man. Yeah, there's a nice sack by Nebraska. And a fumble. Looks like the Cornhuskers have the football nicely done as Lynham picks it up. So, folks, we want to make a big announcement, big noon kickoff. Our studio show, not us, will be back here next week to follow Deion Sanders and this Colorado story, the biggest story in college football. No, you're wrong. It's the biggest story in sports. Ooh, I like it even better. Prime time. Harburg incomplete with 146 to go. Marcus Washington, the intended receiver. You know, it's 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 so fascinating. There was a large sector of people that were offended. A lot of them, other coaches around the country, with how Dion was going about putting together this roster. You know, 86 new players, really hitting it hard in the transfer portal. And I, my point was, what do you want them to do? They were 1 and 11, lost by an average of 29. They played seven ranked opponents last year. They lost by an average of 36 in those games. Their last four games last year, they lost by an average of 41 and a half. What did you want him to do with that roster? So, of course, he flipped it. I think it was the same type of people that then all week this week, Gus, started saying things like, it was just one game. Let's stop overreacting. Well, like, well, what do we say now? They're three-point favorites, and they're up 36-7 to seven in a rivalry game. Deion Sanders saying in his press conference, don't let me get comfortable. And I'm about to get comfortable. What does that mean, Joel? Well, this is a new roster. You know, this this is a guy. A beautiful run here. How about this? It's Johnson. And it'll go down at the Colorado five. Omari, Omarion Cooper with the tackle, a 44-yard gain. He means get comfortable with his players. Let me figure out how to coach each one of these guys individually. Because each one of these individuals, these human beings, they have a certain way that they are motivated. Once he learns that, he feels like they can go to the next level. Another run for Nebraska on the other end for the Ford Huskers. They start their season 0-2. Yeah. Turnovers have been a major, major issue. Next week, they're at home to take on Northern Illinois and Louisiana Tech to follow. And after that, it's Michigan. Well, there's no doubt that Matt Rule and Deion Sanders have taken two different routes in their first year. And it's Johnson trying to get outside, but tracked down from behind. Nicely done. Jeremiah Brown. Gus Wild, they both turned over the roster. Nebraska has over 60, I think 65 new players on their roster. Matt Rule did it with 44 of those as freshmen. I would say that this is kind of tortoise in the hair. Dion wanted it right now, and Matt Rule wants to, to build this slowly, and he wants to build this Nice touchdown right there. Good ball. Touchdown caught by Fedoni. But continue your point. He wants to build this from the inside out. Dion has said, stated, I want to build it from the outside in. I'm going to bring the talent in to go out there and win now. And we'll figure out and continue to build at the line of scrimmage. Whereas Matt Rule wants to build this inside out for Nebraska and play a methodical, physical brand of football and return them to where they feel like they rightfully can be. Last week was a gut punch for Nebraska, losing that game to Minnesota. Today, I mean, frankly, they, 
they were just not a good enough team against Colorado and in particular when you start to compound those mistakes I like Matt Rule as a coach I think that this guy is a hell of a coach and is the right type of guy for Nebraska but I got to tell you when you're looking over as a Nebraska fan and looking how quick Dion did this at Colorado it's got to be jarring doesn't it Matt Rule's got to find a quarterback there's no doubt about it can't turn the ball over the way Jeff Sims has been turning the ball over the past two games it's demoralizing deflating for your team and hopefully this young man will have a chance to get it together but as for now 36 14 the final the fans ready to storm the field they said that they would do it Deion Sanders has told us that if they do storm the field he's not going to be able to get across the field to shake hands with Matt Rule safety purposes remember Dion is Two toes amputated. So it's hard to move around for the Hall of Fame. So Matt just ran over. He ran over to shake his hand. How about that? All right. Good sportsmanlike gesture. Sportsmanship. Matt Rule. You do have a good feeling about this coach. I do. I do. He's got a good stand. So do I. Yeah. On the other sideline, Deion Sanders taking on all comers. Coach Prime, a second away from winning his second game to start his tenure at Colorado, 36 to 14, the final. And here the kids come. They are excited. This is a major release for Colorado football fans. Better part of two decades. This feeling for these fans, they haven't felt for two decades. Deion Sanders and his Buffaloes improved to 2 0. It wasn't pretty at all times, but effective. Next week, a rivalry game, another rivalry game. Colorado State right here at home big new kickoff our studio show will be here Shador Sanders officially in the hunt for the Heisman Trophy now another 300 yard game he followed that up after throwing for over 500 and four touchdowns no interceptions in his first game on the road at TCU Shador Throwing for 393 today, two touchdowns, no interceptions. And our Jenny Taft is down on the field with Coach Prime. Well, Gus, we found a little hangout here in the tunnel. We had to get Coach Prime out of there. You know what I'm excited to say? You're 2 0, Coach. You expected this. Some may have doubted you, but how proud are you about this potential? I'm so, I'm so proud of our team. We're so resilient. We stunk it up in the first half. The second half, we came back. Uh, we started at the latter part of the first half, but we came back. We had a great talk at halftime, and we just came back and used our resilience. Can we talk about your defense, too? Much improved from last week. Four forced turnovers. How hard did they play? Uh, they played their butts off. Uh, we, it was just a couple personnel things that we needed to fix. We're still going to go take a look at just giving up that big play at the end of the game. We hate stuff like that. Coaches do. But overall, I'm so proud of our kids. I'm so proud of the the school, I'm so proud of the alumni and everyone. I mean, seeing the kids storm the field, I've never been a part of anything like that before. So I love it 100%. What can you tell us about what we should expect from Colorado for the rest of the season? Plenty more of this, I hope. I don't think I stumbled or started when I told you we were coming. <laughs> <laughs> Not at all. We coming. Thank you, Coach. God bless you. Thank you. Deion Sanders and the Colorado Buffaloes. 